Unit 20, Learning Aims A and B. The objective of this PowerPoint presentation is to reacquaint yourselves with the grading criteria and what is required. Merit and Distinction <clears throat> for Learning Aim A. A, M1, you need to analyse and it says different types, which is plural. So don't just use one example you need to analyze a series of examples. For a distinction, <clears throat> you then need to evaluate detailed examples of the uses of different single camera techniques and their effectiveness in different types of single camera production. So the difference here is for merit, you analyze, and then for distinction, you start to evaluate. I strongly suggest that you start off by analysing these single camera techniques and then move on to evaluating them. That way you are able to keep up with exactly what you are doing and how you are doing it. The summary of this learning aim is basically to show an understanding of single camera productions. You need to produce the evidence for exactly that. The key content areas are A1, purposes of single camera production, and A2, single camera techniques. Don't get them mixed up. Purposes, what is the purpose of single camera production? Look into TV, video, film, both uh, short film as well as the feature films. Single camera techniques, what techniques have they used? Has it been a steady cam technique to achieve a specific shot? Did they use a crane to achieve that specific shot or even a wire cam? How have they used it and what have they actually accomplished by using it? The tip here is evaluate the effectiveness of single camera techniques in a range of productions. Don't just stick to one show of range. That way you are showing your understanding in a very, quite a clear way. The grading criteria, as you see here, pass is explain, which you will do anyway, analyze and then evaluate. Follow this grading criteria to the letter and you won't go far wrong in achieving what my expectations are for all the class, and that is a D1. Learning aim B. Now this is accomplished in two ways. For a merit, you need to demonstrate effective application of single camera planning and recording techniques. For a distinction, you need to demonstrate accomplished planning skills to a high level of technical expertise. Now, the objective here is basically to start off in the written work to demonstrate an effective application. In other words, all the documents for pre-production, i.e. script, shooting script, storyboard, etc. Accomplished means that all these documents need to be thoroughly thought through and are tidy, easily understandable and very detailed. The summary here is you are exploring single camera techniques to accomplish this. The key areas are planner single camera production, which is based upon all of your pre-production techniques used to create this movie. And the second B2 is shoot a single camera production, which I'll go into in a minute. You've got the tip here of planning a single camera production, shoot for a defined purpose, shooting footage, etc. And it also says, and a range of shot types, angles and movement. You must accompany this with a production log. That production log needs to be detailed. Think about the decisions you've made, how you've accomplished them, what you, why you've changed any of them. The learning aim here is again, as I said, demonstrate effective application, demonstrate accomplished planning. When it comes to shooting your film, you've got to think about, obviously, the camera. If you have access to a DSLR camera, then wonderful, use it. But if you haven't, then you can always use your phone. But don't forget, you need to make sure you compose your images correctly. Think about the fact that if you are using a close-up, 
then you need to move your camera, in this case your mobile phone, into that close-up position. Remember, the camera doesn't choose the shots, you choose the shots. So move forward. If you want to zoom in, zoom in, that's fine. But I strongly suggest that you tend to steer away from the zooming in and keep moving you and the camera, which is your phone, closer to your subject. If you are having trouble with regards to a tripod with your phone, then perhaps you can use something as simple as a cushion, a pillow, or lean up against a door frame to keep that steadiness in your body so that the camera doesn't move. All these are sort of common sense really, and you need to follow these very carefully to accomplish that distinction level.